name is Etienne Bernard. Hello, my name is John Moirago. And we're going to talk about fine textual answer and text cases, which are natural language understanding function of a Wolfram language. Okay, so uh, hi everyone. Thank you for being here for this talk. And um, today we're going to talk about um, some of the latest advances um, in the domain of uh, natural language understanding uh, in, the, in the Wolfram language. And in particular, the function find textual answer and uh, text cases. So before, I want to tell a few words about uh, what natural language understanding is. Uh, that is, I mean, basically a synonym for, nat for natural language processing. Um, so there's many tasks that would fall uh, into this field. An example is entity rec recognition. So the goal is to, uh, in a text, uh, annotate or label uh, each word, um, I mean, or at least some word that are an entity. For example, here, Northern Ireland is an administrative division. Here, there's a date. This is a number. Uh, here, you have uh, music work and uh, person, music genre, and so on. Country, very classic. That's one task. Uh, another task is parsing to a symbolic representation. So here, I have an example of grammatical parsing, where the goal is to, to tell the gram grammatical unit of, uh, of each word. And by the way, there is a function in the, in the language called text structure that, that, does, uh, that does this. This is not new. Um, question answering is another natural language understanding task where you have uh, a piece of text, okay? And then you have question about this piece of text. And, and the goal is to answer the question. Um, summarization, another, one of these tasks, language modeling. So language modeling is to uh, have a model that can generate text um, according to the distribution of uh, natural language. Uh, so typically, we would model the probability for the next character given the past ones. Uh, translation, another of these tasks. Dialogue generation, another one. And uh, we have a long history at Wolfram Research um, in the domain of natural language understanding, especially because of Wolfram Alpha. Well, the Wolfram Alpha, I'm sure you all used it. So uh, the goal is you, you type a question in natural language. And Wolfram Alpha will need to understand this question uh, in order to be able to uh, query database and answer the question. So, and, and um, then because of Wolfram Alpha, we have a lot of, uh, let's see, uh, children function. Uh, so inherited from the Wolfram Alpha technology, such as interpreter. So interpreter is, you can say, um, hey, I know it's a city. Uh, the string is NYC. What is, what is the, the city? And, and it uh, represents it as an entity. And then you can query properties and things like that. Uh, freeform input is also, uh, so if I do control equal, where is Jerome? You know this computer better than me? Uh, maybe it's time to leave the full screen. <laughs> it's control equal or it's something else? No, no, it's control equal. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right, well, if you do control equal, then you can type something in natural language, and it will uh, interpret it uh, as uh, continue to dry, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it will and it will give it um, uh, basically the word from uh, language expression to perform the the, the the action you wanted to do. Here you go. Here you go. Full screen has always problem. <laughs> so if I want to say, I don't know, yeah, okay, classic, yeah. Integrate, you know, sign x from uh, up from two to three, okay. And it will interpret it as a Wolfram language expression, and then you can evaluate it. Um, grammar apply is also something uh, inherited from, from Wolfram Alpha. Uh, it's a way for you to, to uh, uh, define grammars. Uh, for example, here it's, okay, there's a, um, the kind of, of a sentence that I'm trying to pass, well, there will be in, in fixed order, first there will be an add, then there will be a token, which is a semantic number, then another token, which is another semantic number, and, and uh, then you perform this action. And if you put grammar apply uh, and apply it to, to this sentence, it will pass, so it will understand this sentence and then perform the, the operation. And um, one thing that is important to know is that uh, Wolfram Alpha technology is mainly uh, this type of, of uh, technology, which, which is, um, so it's mainly manual uh, programming, um, which is like a 
extremely big piece and, and impressive piece of, of, uh, of technology. And, uh, and the reason uh, we did, I mean, I wasn't there, but uh, we did uh, at Wolfram Research um, uh, this solution, that it's the only one that works to perform this type of, uh, of task. And uh, uh, for a very long time, uh, only this type of solution uh, were efficient to uh, do natural language understanding. Uh, but recently, as you've been all aware, there's been a big push to, instead of having encoded solution, to have learned solution. And, uh, and the reason is, uh, well, it's, one, one is that it's more in fashion and people uh, annotate so we have better data, uh, we have more computing power, and uh, there's also a lot of research in neural networks that allow to Anyway, let's not go into much detail, but um, that allowed to kind of express more of prior knowledge you have about the, the problem and, and, and uh, take advantage your data uh, as good as, as possible. And, uh, and that's why we decided to kind of start introducing this type of solution for natural language processing in the world from language. Uh, and, and Jerome will start presenting some of these uh, Solution. Yeah. Right. So I start with a fine textual answer. So it's about uh, question answering. So you give a piece of text, uh, and and you want to ask a question about this text. So for example, here I have a text about uh, some city in Russia where it's called, and I'm asking uh, a bunch of question on it. And I call fine textual answer. Here I thread to show which answer correspond to which question. Uh, okay. So it's answering the question. So this is based on a on a neural network, as uh, Etienne mentioned. Uh, so of course, it's not perfect also. So here, th there is another example where I give a, a book, The Phantom of the Opera. I ask, uh, who is Raoul? So it's taking more time because the, the book is big. And OK, it answers something that maybe can make sense, like, uh, but uh, Christine is not Raoul, obviously. So to talk a bit about the technology behind, so first, uh, it's in a two-step procedure. First, there is a TF IDF based uh, filtering to if the, the text is the input text is very big to select a few paragraphs because the neural networks are a bit expensive to, to run even if it's improving. Uh, so first, yeah, based on the words uh, of the question and on the, on the text, we are going to select so, some paragraph. And then on the piece of text uh, on the on the top paragraph that are selected. After this selection, we run a, a neural network, which is this one. So we developed it with our framework. So it's a net graph, a graph of layer like this. And maybe I briefly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, to describe uh, briefly uh, as it works. So <coughs> first. First, you divide the text into words, then each word in, is mapped into a semantic vector, so it's called word embeddings. Then there is a recurrent network on it, which means after the recurrent net neural network, you also have one vector per word, but it depends on the context, like it's context-dependent word embeddings. Then there is a, some attention mechanism. So attention mechanism is when you have a sequence of objects and you have got, got a query, and given the query, you are going to assign weights to, to the, all these objects to get a unique uh, vector representation of the full sequence. So that's what we are doing, and we are doing the, the two way. So the context attend the question, and the question attend the context. Like you, if you, you are asked a question, you can ask a paragraph having the question in mind, and then you can reread the question once you read the, the passage, also to reinterpret the context of the question given the paragraph. It's more or less the idea. And then after the attention, again, recurrent neural networks, because it is very good. And then some point on networks, which are going to assign to each word a probability that the answer start and ends here. And then after, we, you, you apply your constraint to choose the best uh, segment of text uh, that will answer the, the, the question. Yeah, there is a blog if you want a more explain explanation. So the training data, it was mainly uh, Squad, which is a famous data set uh, for question answering. It was about 100,000 paragraphs from Wikipedia. Uh, and actually, this data set, uh, at the beginning, it was challenging, but after, uh, like, the, the machine started to, to achieve the human performance. And the problem of the data set is that the way it was created, like, um, passages were given to people, and, and they have to, 
to make a question out of this passage. So first, it assumes that the question, the answer is always in this passage. And also, by the way, it's done like, uh, yeah, normally you don't know if the answer is in the text. So, so it's not very realistic. That's why fun textual answer also is not uh, operating very good. And also, if, if you, yeah, the model that are trained, we, we didn't not only train on Wikipedia, but if you train only on Wikipedia, then if you put a, a text that is more free than Wikipedia with misspellings, this kind of stuff, then it does not look like Wikipedia. It's always the problem of machine learning, like your, your training data has to be representative of the application you want to build. So it works well for Wikipedia-like text, but not always uh, good. But uh, yeah, we are going, so it was 11.3. Uh, fine textual answer, there, there was no improvement for this version, but for the next one, there was a new squad data set where they realized, like, let's make a harder data set with unanswerable questions. So we are going to retrain for the next version, another improved version of fine textual answer. Now let's switch to text cases. So Etienne will introduce yep. the project. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the text cases is not a new function. Actually, it's almost three years old, I believe, we introduced it. Uh, although we kept it experimental for all this time uh, because it's a very ambitious function. Um, so the goal is to do um, uh, name entity recognition, but uh, actually, as Jerome will show after, not just for six type, as it's usually in data set, like city, country, person, location, things like that, but more for 300 types. And, um, and uh, of course, this, this gives these uh, challenges. So. Uh, let me quickly uh, kind of remind what well, the, the, the syntax of text cases. So, so the idea is that you, the first argument is some text. Here, I grab the Wikipedia page of Champagne. Uh, and then second argument, you can ask for something you look for. For example, I'm looking for all the person in, uh, in Champagne. And uh, uh, this, by the way, is running the new version. OK, so what I should have said is that we did a big update in 12. That's why we are, we are talking about it uh, today. Um, okay, so we have all the persons, uh, but you can also uh, specify uh, output type. You can say, oh, actually I want this person to be interpreted in our entity representation. And uh, okay, so some are interpreted, some are not because we don't have entities for them. So, so there's an option that we just introduced. Uh, it's called verify interpretation. So here it makes sure that only return results that are in our um, in our system. And uh, you can also give several properties. So here I'm going to say, return the position, the string, and the interpretation for all of these, uh, all these persons. Um, all right, so you know, it also gives the role of text position and, and, and so on. Um, and what you can do also is several types. So I want all the person and all the countries. And this is something we changed for 12. Uh, now it will return an association where there's a key for person, a key for country, and then all the, all the, all the results. You can see person, and you have all the results for persons, and then country, and all the results for country. Uh, containing is another interesting um, thing for text cases, where you can say, OK, I want all the sentence, all the sentences that contain uh, a person. Uh, and you can also use things like verbatim, which would be the equivalent of an exact string match. Uh, so here it would be, uh, okay, so this is all the sentences. This will be, okay, let's <laughs> unravel that. This is all the person that contain, it's a little present you did for me, <laughs> um, that, that have a surname that, that have, contain Yeah, that a given all the person that have a surname that contains CK. Okay, well that's, Interesting query. So, you know, you can mix like exact string match and more semantic uh, type. Okay, so that's how um, Texas works. And, and, uh, and as I was saying, in version 12, we did a big update. Now it's a, it's a big neural network behind it. And we have many more types. And so Jerome is going to, oh no, first I have to speak about text content. Okay. Bef because we did this big update, uh, we decided to introduce a new function that's called text contents. But it's easier to use because you just give some text, shift enter, and it will try to tell you a bit everything that it knows about this text. So it's more of a computer to human function. You know, it returns data set and you can eyeball it. Uh, and you can actually discover what text cases can do. 
but I, I assume that case, text cases will be more the, the, the actual function being used. Uh, and so you can see here, okay, so champagne identified as a city, it was in first position. Uh, it has a probability, that's one of the advantage of uh, having a, a statistical solution, so in that case a neural network, um, is that now we have a probability. So actually there's an option that I forgot to mention, is this uh, acceptance threshold. So you can set an acceptance threshold, and let's say I put an acceptance threshold of 0 0.95. Then I should have these quantities, for example, that are, that are going away. So let's see. Acceptance threshold. Whoop, what's going on? A. Yeah. I can't see the cursor. That's, uh, okay. It should also complete. You, you can't, don't see the cursor, anyway. Uh, 0 0.95, okay, so here it will only, only keep what it's really confident, and actually not. <laughs> well, that's a problem. <laughs> 12 is not out yet, so we're going to solve that, but it's pretty easy to filter by probability, and, uh, and this will be done. Okay, and uh, all right, so I was saying there's many, many more type, and so Jérôme is going to present about it. Yeah, so... Yeah, as I can say, there are about more than 300 types in total. So in the end, we, we made a guide page, like the interpreter types and entity types to document all of them because it was becoming so much, so, too much. So we make some, some sections so that you, the user can find what he wants into it. So I'm going to present all, all, the, all the types, more or less, uh, how to demo it. So text content, by, by default, it's taking a, a set of types that we thought it was good to, to have some semantic contents, like entities, quantity, colors, dates, this kind of stuff. But you can, in both function, you can specify the type you want. And what we achieve, actually, what we, was not possible in the previous version, which was based on the spellings for, for this kind of thing, the entities, is that there is disambiguation, like you see the word dog is in this example, so what that is understanding that the first dog is referring to the animal, so it's called, it's a species type, and the second hot, uh, in hot dog is referring to food. So it's the, it's yeah one of the, the good features about it. So okay, as Etienne mentioned, there are entities, so, and, and it's not about yeah, the six type of entity like person, like uh, you can detect the, the entity types uh, that are in the world from language. For example, here on the Wikipedia planets, I detect all the planets. Yeah, please. On the dog, hot dog, for example, it looks like because it's the first time it said, oh yeah, I have a dog, the probability, by adding this new functionality, the probability that it knows that, that it's a dog that is species went up to 51%. But let's say that I know that my text is only going to refer to animals and not hot dogs. Is there a way of, uh, of enforcing? Yeah. Then but you can play with the uh, acceptance threshold. Uh, to but, but you cannot change the priors, no. No. It's uh, a... Yeah, okay. Presumably it would have been, if they didn't ha have the ambiguity between dog and hot dog, that first sentence should have been a lot higher of a probability that the dog is... Yeah. yeah. We could give a way for users to specify some prior information they have. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a bit complicated. There's so many types. And so you can have to define the prior for everything. Uh, we do that for classify, you can have class priors. Um, we should think about it, maybe there's a way to, to give a hint. Mm. Could be useful. Actually, for now, if you specify performance goal goes to speed, it, it disables the neural networks and it will use some spellings. So maybe it's a way to <laughs> achieve what you want. <laughs> okay, so it was about the planets. So yeah, you can find a, specify the type of entity that you want, but if you are looking for one particular entity, you can specify it, like here, I'm not looking for all the planets, but on, only Mars, and I'm asking to reach on uh, highlighted snippets around the world, around the world. Okay, then there are locations. So here, yeah, it's about uh, a page about the, the drink in Champagne. Uh, I can extract the location, and I'm asking to reach on the string and the interpretation, which are geoposition in the case of uh, of locations. This all the string that can be interpreted as a location, so countries or cities, or, right? And location is a general, but if you want a city or country, more, more accurate uh, kind of location, you can also have it. Sorry, so is, is this uh, coming out in 12 or is it yeah. already there? Uh, oh, it's in 12, yeah. I mean, big update in 12. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's so already there, but it's going to work much better in 12. 
Okay, you can ask for dates. Still experimental. We'll de-experimentalize when you know we're confident that you know everything works. <laughs> okay, there are some the quantities and the numbers. So it's detecting also the the numbers in literal. And here, for example, I gave a passage with uh, some currency. I'm calling text content. It's detecting the currencies. Uh, also, yeah, you can ask for an output property, but you can also make a function like this, which use the property like this. Like here, uh, yeah, my output function is a, is a rule from a string, and I take the interpretation, which is the, the currency, and then I convert to dollar, and then it, it will display the, the results. Uh, in this form. So it's taking a bit of time to run the interpreter, and I have all my currency in two dollars. Okay, there are identification elements, uh, like person, email address, zip code, URL, this kind of stuff. Then there are <coughs> parts of uh, homogeneous text, uh, uh, of homogeneous text, either uh, related to semantic, like there are some uh, topics, if you want music topics, we've got a library of topics that you can detect into a text. Or you can ask also for the search for, for pieces of text in a particular language, also programming language, other stuff. And there are some uh, classical NLP where you can ask for the part of speech, like verb, pronouns, and also verb phrase. So here it will do the same as text structure, that's just returning the, the result into another, uh, another format. And uh, yeah, there are also word and sentences. For those who know text word and text sentence, text sentences, sorry, it's uh, it's the same. And for those who know about tokenization, which is each kind of one of the first process you do when you do natural language processing, you can also add, uh, ask for text cases to uh, return word or punctuation. Yeah, we didn't mention that alternative is also working and it's making a unique type. So here I'm asking word and punctuation, and it's tokenizing the text. Okay, so do I have a time? I have a bit of time to explain uh, what's under the wall. Like, really, it's a big machine. Here I present like uh, the, the main novelty, but we are still using some, some regexes, regex uh, calling the interpreter. Like, the, 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 there are several uh, passes. It's a hybrid system. It's a hybrid system, yeah. So, yeah, there are the built in classifiers. There were already classifiers before that, that are plugging to it to to classify pieces of text with profanity, all the sentiment, uh, the topics, the language, and the programming language. And the big novelty that is the, is the neural network to do the disambiguation part. So it's based uh, originally. So again, we built it uh, with our framework. And the, the depart point was a, a model released by the Allen Institute called ELMO, which was doing uh, contextual word embeddings. So yeah, you have a word. First, you do the re regular embedding where each word is uh, mapped into a vector independently of the context. Uh, no, actually, oh, I start again. Actually, it's a character-based model. So there is no yeah, well, good point about this model. And this is needed for entity. There is no out of vocabulary. Because when you have a lookup table with words, if the word is not in your training data set, you are stuck. You, you cannot recognize anything. So this is a character-based word embedding. So it's the characters which are mapped to vectors. Then there is a convolutions. Actually, there are several convolutions in parallel that you see here with several filter sizes. So it's doing n grams of characters. Like it's taking the, the characters alone, the, the, the pairs and the tuples of characters, etc. Then we pull to have one representation of the world and then like on neural networks. Okay. And in the end, yeah, it gives another network. And the first layer are the same. You can see that there are differences, like you don't see this stuff, but this is a, an optimization detail, like I packed all the com convolutions together uh, to make a unique convolution with some zeros in the filters just to be faster. But uh, if, you, if you retrain it, then the zero not become zero and it's not equivalent. And for the training data set, so this was the, the big work to make the data set to train these networks. Uh, so here we, we also use the mainly Wikipedia like uh, 300,000 pages. We use the, the knowledge base of Wolfram Alpha, like, uh, yeah, because Wolfram Alpha, when you type your research, it's par par when you type a um, request, it's parsing this request, and then uh, assigning it to each word, uh, linking each word to the knowledge ba base. So we used this. We also used the links in Wikipedia to make this ambiguation. 
like on this page of, Mer of Mercury. Mercury uh, is referred to as a planet sometimes. Uh, he has a mythology, as a, and if you follow the link and you look at the bottom of the Wikipedia page, you will see the category and it helps to disambiguate the world in context. So it's kind of a mix of many, what from our final edge, things from Wikipedia, some other secret sauce that you know, we won't talk about. And uh, okay, so to conclude very quickly, so we can take a few questions. Uh, so we talked about fine textual answer, uh, text cases, text content, and text cases is a very big update, text content is new, and uh, we're pretty happy with the result that the neural network solution give us. So we'll continue, but that's really the beginning. So, so um, we, we, we will improve fine textual a lot, I believe, including text cases, text content. It's kind of almost our first experiment, although I know you worked a long time on it. And, uh, and then we want to tackle all the... We have to bootstrap it. Exactly, we have to bootstrap. We have, we have many ideas to include more knowledge from Alpha Alpha uh, into it. Um, and then we want to tackle all the tasks such as summarization, translation, and make all that available for all languages, which is not an easy feature, but we'll try to, to make it happen. Okay, is there some question?